second reading this morning comes from <clears throat> Joshua chapter 6, verses 6 to 16 and 20. So Joshua, son of Nun, summoned the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and have seven priests carry seven trumpets of ram's horns, horns in front of the Ark of the Lord. To the people he said, Go forward and march around the city. Have the armed men pass on before the Ark of the Lord. As Joshua had commanded the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord went forward, blowing the trumpets with the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord following them. And then, and, and the armored men went before the priests who blew the trumpets. The rear guard came after the Ark while the trumpets blew continually. To the people, Joshua gave this command. You shall not shout or let your voice be heard, nor shall you utter a word until the day I tell you to shout. Then you shall shout. So the ark of the Lord went around the city, circling at once, and they came into the camp and spent the night in the camp. Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord passed on, blowing the trumpets and continually, uh, continually. The armed men went before them, and the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord, while the trumpets blew continually. On the second day, they marched around the city once and then returned to the camp. They did this for six days. On the seventh day, they rose early at dawn and marched around the city in the same manner seven times. It was only on that day that they marched around the city seven times. And at that seventh time, when the priests had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. So the people shouted, and the trumpets were blown. As soon as the people heard the sound of the trumpets, they raised a great shout, and the wall fell down. No, excuse me, and the wall fell down flat. So the people charged straight ahead into the city and captured it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. God richly blessed the reinterpretation of his word today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you for uh, the songs, the messages in them, for the comments, the prayers, the, the children's moment, all the different things that you've already been present with us in today as we as we assemble to worship you. Now, Lord, as we look into your word, we pray that you'd open our hearts, our minds, our ears, give us understanding, help us to get from your word what you have for us today. Let me be your mouthpiece to share the things you have to share in the way you have to share. So we can go forth and better represent you, better be your people uh, in our community and our world. For it's just in that we pray. Amen. I want to talk to you about a belief that endures today. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about something that, uh, that came to my mind as I was getting this ready. At the church where I attended as a teenager, there was this lady who had two little boys who also attended. And for the purposes of this uh, recollection, we'll call her Sherry. The names have been changed, changed to protect the innocent, as, as they used to say. You know, when they said Dragnet, uh, that's probably before <laughs> a lot, well, some of your time, but anyway. But anyway. <laughs> But so her name, we'll call her Sherry. This lady attended very faithfully. Many of her brothers and sisters, also her mother, attended the church as well. And this family was very strong in the church. There were a few people in the family who did not attend, and one of these was Sherry's husband. We'll call him Terry. 
uh, we'll go with the Sherry Terry kind of rhyme. Um, Terry was one of these good old boys who just didn't come to church and really didn't see much use in it. Sherry would talk of how she prayed that he would come to know Christ and, and, and how she worked on it, but usually she was doing good if she could just get him there for Christmas. That time went on, the church went through some hard times and split, and Sherry uh, continued to come very faithfully to church. She even got more involved after the split. Terry still didn't come. Sherry's brother-in-law, who was a pastor, became the pastor of the church, and Terry still did not come. Time went on, the church would not leave the split behind, so we later went on to another church. At that time, things began to happen. The church began to grow, during which time I was able to find healing, and that isn't the point of this story. So, but as the church was growing, one Sunday, Sherry's sister showed up for worship. A few weeks later, Sherry showed up for worship, and her boys also. They began to attend and eventually join at that church too. Sherry also needed to find a place where she could pick up and go on and, and leave the dissension behind, a place where her boys could grow in Christ in a positive environment. One Sunday we arrived at church to find out that the thing we had hoped for and prayed for had happened. Terry had come under conviction and had called our pastor and had, to his house and had made a profession of faith. Terry became a very active uh, member, person in the church and member. He was a go-getter, if you will, for God. He brought others of his family members to Christ. One was an alcoholic brother-in-law. A couple years later, Terry accepted the call into the ministry. For a while, he later became the pastor of the church where I attended as a teenager. That his, and his wife and his voice came. He tried to help that church have a new start. What if Sherry had given up? What if she had quit praying for him and, and maybe quit coming to church and to stay with him at home or something? The story might have had a much different ending if she had not continued to pray and, and endured, if you will, uh, in her prayers and her, her faith that, that uh, Terry would come, come to Christ. I think this is much like our scripture for today. Let's look at today at some people who had, had to wait a while with, a, with belief and endurance before victory finally came. We've heard the scripture this morning, and, and, uh, and I just want you to notice that the people had a belief that endured. They marched around the city six times and nothing happened. Six different days. It says they, they, they marched around one time for, for six days. They made this trip around one time for six days, repeated six days. Not even one stone fell. Don't you think that'd be discouraging? You know, what? This is just ridiculous. They're laughing at us, you know, and, and uh, nothing's happening. What? This is, this is pathetic. What's the use of this? You know, I'm sure all these things were going through their mind because uh, nothing was happening. You know, Joshua, what are you having us do this for? What if they'd given up? What if they'd said, this this won't work. I don't see any results. And, and they had they had, and just and quit. Went home. They had, they had had their belief in what God could do uh, through them revived. And, uh, and they continued to, to march around with the belief that sometimes something God was going to do, take care of it. God was going to do something. And they continued to march around and do as Joshua said. Could this be one of the greatest needs of the Christian church today? You know, theirs was a belief that wouldn't give up, and victory came. We need a belief that endures. Victories don't always come to us when we want them to. You know, we, it may be a loved one who we want to come to Christ, and we're praying about, and we're wanting them to come, and we want them to come God, answer our prayers and, and answer them now. You know, we, we just really want to see it happen now. Maybe it's church growth and attendance. You know, we want to see it just grow real fast, but, but it's not happening real fast. Or maybe it's our own personal growth as a Christian. 
Maybe it's a habit we're trying to get over or something that we just can't seem to, to do that. We find that we try and try only to fail again. Well, the lesson here in this passage of scripture is for us to not give up. Not give up, to have a belief that endures. This could be the sixth time around Jericho, so to speak, and, and it could happen any time. If we continue to pray, continue to believe in what God can do through us and with us. If we don't stop believing what God can do through us and in the world we live in, if we can see some miracles happen today if we don't give up and quit. Let's not let Satan stamp out our belief with time. I think I can't think exactly what Jerry said a while ago, but that something connected as she said it made me think you know about that that you know time time that it doesn't have time that things don't happen that we'd like to to see them happen you know that is a tool that i think satan uses to, to discourage us and say well, there's nothing to this this faith this thing that's what's going to happen could it be that that's one of satan's greatest tools against the church and individual christians Today is unbelief resulting from discouragement and time that things don't happen. Look at the world around us. Christians who don't believe their life matters. They don't think their vote matters. They don't think, you know, what they do matters, what they say matters. Christians who don't believe they can make a difference. Things are just going to be the way they are, they are and, and there's nothing I can do to, to, to change that. That's the general feeling today. Nothing I can do to stop it, nothing that I can do to change that. If Satan can discourage us, thus killing our belief, he has us. A lot of times I've noticed he does it with time. Time when things we wish and pray for don't happen, time that we can, that he can work on our minds and create doubts, cause doubts, put doubts in our minds. We need an endurance to keep believing, to keep believing in what God can do through us. It doesn't have to be this way. God is greater than Satan. God hasn't changed. God hasn't moved. If we believe with endurance, we can have victory today. We can see some miracles happen. We can start seeing our loved ones come to Christ. We will continue to see our church grow. And, and we'll continue to see our church make a difference, a positive difference, sharing the love of God in our community. We will have personal victories over our own selves. When we believe, we are more prone to let God use us to do the things that need to be done so these things can happen. So do we believe this morning? Do we believe in Christ? Do we have a, a belief that endures? Or have we kind of gave up on that belief a little bit? Kind of got discouraged. Do we believe in the difference Christ can make through us? We are in the plan for Christ to make it, for Christ to change the world, for God to change the world. There is no backup plan. Do we believe? Do we have belief that endures no matter what happens or how long it takes? God is still the same today as he was back then. We can see some things happen today. If we believe, then we'll let God use us to make a difference. As we encounter Christ at the table today, ask God to rekindle your belief. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word to us today and as we come and encounter you at the table we pray that you would forgive us for our unbelief for the times that we have given up that we have not believed in the difference you can make that that, that we think what's the use or, or whatever uh, and we kind of kind of given up what you can do through us forgive us for that lord and and help us as we encounter you to be be, to have that, that belief rekindled, to, to leave out the day fired up and encouraged and strengthened uh, with the belief that we can make a difference for you. It does matter uh, how we live, what we do, and help us to be 
uh, leave his place and be good ambassadors of your love and that you want to have a relationship with people and, and help us to let you live through us as we go out today. For it's just that we pray. Amen. Then the Lord's table is not the United Methodist table, or whether you're a member of this church or not, you're invited to participate. Whether you're young or old, you're invited to participate. If God is speaking to you, we, we, we believe and we pray that God will be present at this table spiritually for whatever needs are here today. So maybe you're here and you've never made a confession, a, a profession of faith before. And if the Lord's speaking to you, you can do that. You can, you can say, yes, Lord, I want to follow you. And... Um, if you do that, then let me know so I can help you with the new walk in Christ. But for all of us, maybe we maybe just realize that maybe our, our belief has, has dwindled a little bit. Maybe we just feel like we need that rekindle. But we can have that happen as well as we come and try to cry at the table this morning. So if God's speaking to you, then, then you come and partake with us. Christ the Lord revives his table. All who love him, who are to repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your law. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we are sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Then to the great thanksgiving, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, the Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away, our love failed. And we might say in our belief, failed. Your love remains steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. May covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they have a war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of fire and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit and all him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate the sinners. By the baptism of suffering and death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night that you gave himself up for us, he took the bread and blessed it. So take eat this, and my body is given for you as often as you take it. You take it, remember to me. So if you take the bread, you find it on the bottom side of the little cup. Remember the, the body that God came incarnate in and how God lived among us, how he loved everybody, how he loved little children, those who were outcast. All the example that he set for us in that body. Remember that as we take the bread this morning. Then he took the cup and blessed it. said, drink this, this is my blood of the covenant, poured out for you and for many, for forgiveness of sin, as often as you drink it. Drink it, remember, to me. You find the, the juice on the top side. As you take the cup, remember that God did all that needed to be done for us, for us to be put back in relationship with God. God paid the price. God made a way. 
for us. Remember that as you take the cup this morning. And so remember these your mighty acts of Jesus Christ. We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Let's pray. For out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, you know these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Be present at our table, Lord, for whatever needs that we bring uh, today. Meet those needs, Lord, so that we can go forth and better represent you in the world, better share your love, and bring people to you, show people that you want to love them too. By your spirit, make us one with Christ to live like him. One with each other, and one our ministry to all the world. Till Christ comes with final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now, with the confidence of the children of God, let's pray the prayer before we toss the clay. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 